Welcome to the ColorLogic presentation. In today's seminar, we're going to cover the primary basics of what ColorLogic is, how it works on your machines, and we'll also cover the basics behind how it actually works from a color theory perspective. The second part of the presentation, we're going to go more hands-on training into the Photoshop and Illustrator, plus also covering the FX viewer. And the third part, we're going to actually show you how the Rico NFR landing sites work for um, access the client login area on our website. So it's all about your devices. What can we do with the existing machinery that you have? And so far we've certified your Ricoh Pro C7100 series device, which is your toner based machine with white. But we can also use ColorLogic on your Ricoh Pro L4100, which is your latex large format. So it's the same system will work on both machines. Everything that we do is at the design stage, and so you're creating a file that can then be printed on any machine. We like to say that it's really all about seeing is believing. It's what you're going to see when it's finally printed that will give you the wow factor. Trying to show you something on the computer screen is really not going to give you that like amazing wow feel. But when you see the actual printed metallic results off your device, you'll be bowled over with it. It's incredible what it can do. But metallics say about luxury it's that luxurious feel and especially when it comes to foil so we need to be targeting things that you know you can put onto your machine to start with that will fit the actual sheet size so that could be smaller packaging you know your, your niche product markets you know perfumery golf ball boxes um, cosmetic packaging things that are quite expensive to purchase because you have to take into account the cost of the material and silver foil material is quite expensive so it really is the luxurious goods. You could also use this for magazine covers, it could be clothing tags, you know, the security coupons, tickets, uh, you could even do you know, postcards, greeting cards, or business cards. There's a whole range of things that you can produce on your machines, but you need to try and target that. So we do compare ourselves against one of the leading industries um, color systems, and that is Pantone. Most people know the Pantone system, what people don't really understand is that the Pantone metallic formula guide is actually printed on an offset printing press using offset inks. However, a designer will choose colors from that and expect those colors to be replicated on their printing machines that they're going to use. So if you have a designer that's choosing a color from the Pantone metallic guide and they're trying to print it on your Ricoh 7100 device with a white and a silver substrate, it won't match. So we've got to forget about Pantone because this was literally only ever good for the machine it came off. Now with ColorLogic, we designed our system using the four primary inks or toners on your machine. And that is the cyan, magenta, yellow and black. We can print onto various types of materials from papers, foils, holographic materials, etc. And each one will give us a slightly different effect. For example, if we use a silver foil, we get a certain range of metallic foil colors. If we use a rainbow foil, then we have a color shifting swatch book. So the system will also work on other devices. So you might have a print shop that also has an offset machine as well as your Ricoh device, or you might have the large format latex. So again, color logic will work on all of those machines. You should also take into account the coatings or laminations that you put on top of the print. One thing you should be aware of is that foil substrates will scratch very easily. So you need to protect them after it has been printed, either with a coating or a lamination. And if you choose lamination, um, there are two main options. You have matte lamination and gloss lamination as the two extremes. And you're going to get two different results. If you use a gloss, it's very high shine. I personally prefer the matte um, uh, lamination it gives it a really kind of soft touch luxurious feel but we do recommend that you try different coatings and laminates over the top of your print to see the end result now the good thing about our swatch book is that it will only take four sheets of material to print one of these swatch books off your device and that's good because it means it's a low cost solution to print a swatch book you would also use your own CMYK profile to print this swatch book you're not having to measure the colors in to match anybody else's standard. So you literally put the paper in the front and then it goes through as a dual pass through your machine. 
you'll print the white toner first and then the sheet will come back around and you print the four color over the top. The CMYK is translucent. So we're going to demonstrate that now. So we're going to start off with a silver foil paper. That could also be pearlescent, it could also be holographic material, but for now let's just show it with a silver foil. That will go to your machine and the, it will print down the white toner or ink over the top of that silver substrate. The white acts as a mask to block out the areas of the substrate that you do not want to be metallic. So that's left us now with these little blocks of silver foil showing. So then if we print a cyan toner or ink over the top, the cyan when it prints over the top of the silver foil it turns into a blue foil colour. And that's because these toners are translucent. You can actually see through them. So if I put a magenta over the top, I get these purple colours. Or if I put a yellow over the top of the blue, I get green. So by layering the inks on top and allowing the substrate to be below, we can create all these different effects. We can also create gold, bronzes, silvers, all in line from the same sheet at the same time. So on this sheet here, there is 250 different foil colors. So you can think about using color logic to remove a post finishing process, such as foil stamping, like a hot foil stamping. So by doing it in line, you can reduce the amount of cost associated with luxurious printing. Color logic is really about three main primary components. We have the printer's color communication system. And in simple terms, that is the swatch book. And that is what all your customers need to print off their machines to be able to then give out to their customers to choose the metallic colors from. We also have our designer software that contains the color palettes and plugins to design with. So what happens is each of the color palettes has got an individual name for each color which replicates to the colors in this swatch book. So a designer will pick a color from here and in the design stage they can find that color to design with. The plugin for Photoshop is uh, designed for converting images. Once a customer has made a file or a design using our palettes and plugins, they can then visualize the file using FX Viewer. As that name suggests, it's a way to view the FX of your metallic printing. Now this, Mac, this application is Macintosh only. I need to stress that because it is only for the Mac. The ability of FX Viewer will allow you to see that foil effect on your screen, which means that you don't have to interrupt the press to keep doing proofing. So if you're not interrupting the press, you can maintain maximum uptime on your device, printing jobs and being profitable as opposed to interrupting to do proofs all the time. So by using this solution, you've got a 100% color accurate system, you've got palettes and plugins to quickly design with, and we've got the visualization software. Now, one very, very important part of working with ColorLogic is that even though for your Ricoh devices, you are using a white toner or a white separation, we never have to make a white ink mask using ColorLogic. And it's very important to no mention that because for anybody that's ever tried to do a white ink mask before, they will know how difficult it is. And let me just explain. A spot white ink or toner cannot be seen on your computer monitor. You cannot see it. It's impossible to see a spot white color on your screen. So a graphic designer would have to color that white something random, something different, like maybe a red color or a green. So if you're not seeing the color correctly on your screen, how can you possibly design correctly? Now, let's also take into account, let's just take a look at this slide that's on the screen at the moment. If I wanted the words printer's color communication system to be in a foil color, I would then have to make a mask around everything else and put white ink blocking everything else out. So if you had 50 items on your design and only one of them wanted to be in foil, you'd have to make 49 white knockout masks. Now with our system, we don't ever make that. It's all done automatically as you design with our tools. So it really speeds up the process. When we created the system, we started out with a range of 250 colors. And that is from a master palette of colors of 104 million. So there's a lot more colors we can bring out in the future. So we might bring out a different range of colors. It could be more on autumn and winter shading. 
it could be maybe harmony color palettes where we specify which colors go best with something else so we can add to this system and grow it over the years we also developed a few um, decorative effects and it's easy to show you these on the screen sometimes than to try and explain but I'll run through these one at a time for you so we started out with the 250 colors they span a fully chromatic sequence of coloring so it's based on like a color spectrum so that's our first range of colors you need to take into account that you're printing onto a foil substrate a foil substrate is a shade of gray or black when you look at it so it's not a clear material it looks gray so by printing color on top you've got to understand that color of the material is going to show through so if you print red on top of a silver foil you're adding an equivalent of 30 percent black to that red color so the red is going to dirty down so you're never going to have a pure red metallic other effects that we can create we've got the dimensional effects this is one of our primary system effects that most people are using it's the ability to make an element of the design look like it's a visually changing color when you move the print so if we printed this label out the pattern in the background when you move it will go from a light green to a dark green and i'll demonstrate this using our fx viewer later on the water uh, the gradation effects is the ability to blend different metallic colors together so we could blend a red for example into a gold as we're doing here but we could also blend metallic into non-metallic so we don't have to always have everything in foil we could have maybe um, a red foil here blending just into yellow a process yellow so we create more subtle and luxurious effects so it's not always about the solid we create complex white ink separations through the use of our simple color palettes and plugins the watermark effects is as the name suggests it's like a watermark that will appear in your metallic area so for this to work it has to be inside a metallic element so the background is metallic the pattern is the watermark watermark effects plus this can be used on any colored area it does not have to be a metallic so we can put um, a semi covert um, effect in there so when you move this it will visually appear and disappear as you move the print it won't completely disappear it's all based on how light will shine on something and make it visually appear so what we say is it's a first line of um, almost like a counterfeiting so it's, a, it's ideal for a quick simple way to make something more secure you've got to remember that metallics are very difficult to reproduce so if I have a piece of packaging done in foiled metallics I cannot photograph that and get a, an accurate color from it because the light bounces off the metallic you cannot scan it or color copy it because it will give you a false reading so if it's if you can't measure the color it makes it a lot harder to reproduce so adding metallics makes something more secure as well as giving it that luxurious look image effects is the ability to be able to add metallic effects to an image we developed an algorithm that will calculate the optimum metallic effect for the different pixels within inside the image all at the click of a button we'll demonstrate that later today so for you um, with the NFR licenses there's a process that we would like you to go through so what you need to do and this is explained in our step-by-step -step guide on our website which we will go through today you need to print our test forms out on your devices and then send copies of those to us to become certified once you've become certified we're going to create a special map on our website that will list all Rico NFR sites so that when we have customers that maybe want to purchase we can push them to you um, to buy a license for their Rico device it's all about trying to get that um, branding out there so on these test forms there are two different pages page one has all our different effects so you've got solids dimensionals gradations etc we then use those effects to create the other page of samples so the samples that we have um, can be used as marketing for yourselves to send out to your potential customers you can put your Rico logo and branding on here and then uh, send them out for people we would also recommend that you print the swatch book either just for yourselves to show customers and um, it's, it's a lot better if you print the actual uh, swatch book templates that we provide you can put again your Rico logos on there and you can uh, collate them and put a pin through them we supply the artworks all planned up on a, a layout form all you have to do is add your logos to it 
and you only need four sheets to make one swatch book but it's great to be able to go to a customer and show them the swatch book and open it up and say this is what you can do off your machine we also have these as color charts so single sheets with a range of colors on which are a lot more cost effective to produce but they don't quite have that wow factor but they are good to be able to leave behind as samples with your customers you don't really want to be leaving all your swatch books behind so here's how it works for anybody that's interested in learning the system to design with so we do appreciate that most people that are working for Rico um, may not have a design background and while our color palettes are, are really quite easy to use you need to have design skills to be able to do something good in metallics just using the palettes and plugins on a file doesn't always give you a good result you've got to understand how the metallics work you've got to understand how light will uh, works with metallics what you should and shouldn't make metallic and that only comes from experience and working with these with metallic designs but this is why we've created a range of sample files for you already all you'd have to do is download the files print them out and show them to your customers we really don't expect you to be teaching customers how to design that is what we do that is what we supply as technical support through our training videos we really want you to learn the system but not have to really design with it but if you do then you would take our uh, design tools and install them on your computer you would use the test forms to choose the effects from and you'd use a swatch book to choose your colors from there you would make your design and once you've made your design you can then output that to a PDF file and visualize that in our FX viewer and just to stress again this is a Macintosh only application um, it works in a 3d environment and due to the complexities of PCs it is not technically feasible at this stage to be able to actually visualize its effects there are other softwares out there which can work on a PC but they range from around about 7,000 euros upwards and people just won't pay for it and that is what we have found is that if it's too expensive people just won't use it our FX viewer is a low cost solution and we kept it to the Mac because 90% of our, our customers are Mac based so this will allow you as I said to see the effects on the screen before you go to proof or print so when it comes to outputting the file you've made a design using color logic tools you would then simply output the file and it's separated into five separations you need to use the fiery command workstation it's got a specialized um, part with inside that will, that will do the dual pass printing it will print um, we have a, a separation that looks like a silver separation and it needs to be inverted and mapped to the white on the press and it's all done through this fiery command workstation so all you have to do send it down process it and it's dual pass white down first then it comes back around and it prints the forker on the top and like I said earlier put a coating or lamination down to protect the print we are really big upon education and training for our customers because it's very important that somebody knows how they can design with our tools so we created a landing page for our licensed users and it's very similar to the landing page that we've created for Rico NFR licensees and I'll demonstrate more about this later on but it's broken down into simple steps that we think people should be able to follow such as step one print our test forms step two print our samples step three go through the training process so we're trying to do everything online that people can learn in their own time with inside the, the client login area for a, our licensed printers and this is not for Rico at the moment this is to show you what your customers will get your customers get access to over 70 different designs um, that ranges everything from packaging greeting cards business cards and even our old promotional technical documentation and literature the reason they have access to this and not Rico is that Rico has their own set of files that they can promote so your files are different to what a customer will see and that way you're not going to get this contamination in the marketplace with people showing the same type of files so Rico I've got their very own unique samples that are only for Rico ColorLogic will work on most of the major printing processes and our theory goes that if you can print either a white or a silver then you can use ColorLogic and we can produce it for any different device one design could go out to any one of these machines so if you do have a customer that has a larger type of print shop and they have an offset press as well as digital and a large format then ColorLogic will work on all of their machines it's not a problem 
most of our time at the moment is spent um, working with brands. It's, um, well, I say most of it, we've got about 60% of our time working with brands. And this is because the brand, we see it as they drive the demand for our system. It's quite simple. If we can get a brand interested in using ColorLogic, then it goes further down the, the supply chain. So instead of trying to sell a license to 20 different printers, we go to someone like PNG and we show them what we can do and we start working with their innovative teams to be able to put um, ColorLogic in place. And that has recently started working. We had Hallmark cards in the US. They wanted to be the first online reseller of um, printed digital cards onto foil using a digital press. Uh, GHD is a, a ladies hair straighteners out of the UK, a uh, very, very big company now worth 150 million or something. They've, uh, for the third time running now, they've used our products on their luxury high-end goods. P&G actually came to us for our help, um, assisting them in getting their Femcare range onto their shelves. We actually managed to save them a seven-figure saving on their product range by switching to ColorLogic. So there's a lot of success stories that we have. Some of the things we can't talk about, we can just show you the logos, like we can't really show you what's happening with Nike or Adidas. Um, but there's a lot of work going out there under, this, under the radars that people don't know about. But we also work with some of the smaller companies, you know, this Turtle Run Winery, a small winery in, in, in America, but they could be huge one day. You know, it doesn't matter whether you're a big company or a small, you, everybody can benefit from the power of your machines with ColorLogic. Now there's one really key aspect to your machines and that is white. You have other devices out there that don't have white on them and I'm not going to name drop who they are. I'm sure you're aware who your competitors are that may not have white. Well, you can now create this luxurious look and what we would say is take our test forms and this is the test form planned up. Print one with the white and then print one without the white because then you've got a comparison. You can go to your customer and say look this is what you're going to get off such and such a device. Everything will be foil. There's no contrast. All the highlights, all the shadows, all the flesh tones, everything is foil and it just looks poor and it looks terrible. But by using your white toner to make those masks, your print just comes alive. It just has that amazing wow factor. So by printing these out, that is a really, really good way to show off the benefits of your white. So, talking of benefits, I'm just going to run through a few of the primary things. The first one is an adaptive colour system. And by that we mean it will adapt to changes in your environment. So if you put in a new type of toner into your machines, then all you would do is reprint the swatch book using your new toners. If you have a new certified substrate, again, print the swatch books on your substrates and you get a new colour system. If you have a new device that you develop and it's got a white or a silver, then ColorLogic will adapt to that as well. So it will always stay current with your machines. There's no actual um, hardware to actually purchase. So it's a very low cost solution to keep involved with. We work with all the major printing processes. So if you were to I know, look towards the future and started using nanotechnology in your printing processes, then again, we would work and adapt to that. One thing that we see ColorLogic being used for is for generating new opportunities. And it's all about being able to open doorways to new customers. So if you look from a perspective of a printer, if they're trying to sell print against another printer, so typically they're a commodity print seller, um, and they're selling four color print, then it really is very hard to get into any new customer and say, look, I want to come and talk to you about our company. But if you have something new and unique to show, so for example, you produce a, I don't know, like a, a postcard and you do it using ColorLogic and you mail that out to your new customers that you want to try and get into, inviting them to an open day at your business premises. The invite should say something like, you know, you put on a little bit of food or drink. Customers always turn up for free food and drink is one thing that we've always noticed. But getting them into your business is the key part. You could then show them in the studio how that design was created using the tools and visualize using the FX viewer. You can then send that file down to the press room and in between that, whilst it's going onto the press, you can actually um, guide them through your other areas of print. So for example, they might want to sell their finishing equipment or there might be some other type of equipment they want to upsell. But by doing that, you're engaging with the customers. So your customers themselves can gain new opportunities by using new technology to open those doorways. 
It's a lot easier when you've got something that's shiny and bling and reflective. It grabs people's attention. We also think that Colour Logic is a faster route to market. As I mentioned earlier in the presentation, if you are actually um, separating your files out and you're making a proof on your machine and you're going backwards and forwards to the customer, and the customer keeps making changes because they don't really know what the colour is supposed to look like because there's no system in place, it could waste weeks. Now if you can get into the market for your branded product two weeks quicker by using say ColorLogic, what would those two weeks equate to in additional revenue to that brand? We also like to think about how, you know, there is a cost associated with ColorLogic, but if you could gain one new customer, or for people like yourselves, for Rico, if you could sell one new device using ColorLogic to help sell that, what does that equate to for your company? So it's the same model for Rico as it is for your printers. It's all about getting new customers, hooking them in and getting them using your technology. So that is what ColorLogic can do. It bridges the gaps between everybody. And we've already covered the maximum uptime on press and minimum downtime in the studio because that's all about using the tools to get it through quicker and not interrupting the press to make you proof all the time. Only when your design is ready, then you should make the proof. Okay, so next what we're going to do is cover a short demonstration. It should not take more than five or ten minutes to go to the color palettes and the plugins and also the FX viewer. And then we'll go on to the landing pages for Rico NFR. Okay, so let's start off with, we'll start with Illustrator. Now, it doesn't matter what the design is. These are labels, but it could be packaging, it could be a greeting card, postcard, it, it's really irrelevant. What we're looking at here is artwork, it's color, and it's how we apply our effects. So first of all, I'm gonna open up our separation preview. Um, it's a little floating palette for those that are familiar with Illustrator. And it shows me that I've got a CMYK design with a spot color. And the spot color is CL4713 Silver. That stands for ColorLogic 4713 Silver. Uh, there's actually a reason behind that. 4713 is the numbers from the periodic table for aluminium and silver. So there's a theory behind our naming, but it's quite boring really. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn off the CMYK and we're going to show you that these three files here have got a silver plate created. Now, when we look at this for your machine, the silver area here will be the silver substrate and the white is the white ink mask or your white toner. If you were to develop a device that had a silver toner, or if you bring that out in the future, then the silver would be a silver toner and the white would be the white paper. It would make absolutely no difference when you're designing with our files. So what we're gonna do is create this file here. And to do that, we're actually going to go to the window menu. We're going to go down to the graphic style libraries and we're going to use the ColorLogic graphic style. And what these are, they're pre-built effects so it basically pre-builds CMYK with the, um, the white or silver effect plate. We also have its equivalent watermark and dimensional effect equivalent. So I'm gonna go through these and show you how this works. I'm gonna use my um, direct selection tool, which is the second one down in the list here, this little white one. And I'm gonna click and pick up an element of area to color up. So at the top, let's go with a gold, because this is a Chardonnay label. We've got golds and bronzes in the image. so find a gold. So I would typically be looking through my swatch book here, which obviously you can't see on my screen. I would then pick a color that I want to use and apply that to my artwork. If I want to apply our special effects, like dimensional, I'll select this here. If the background color is number 17, then the effect needs to be 17 dimensional effect. Same thing up here. I'm going to select that text and ungroup, click on dimensional effect. At the bottom, let's go with number 10, like a bronze. And again, let's pick this one up here. The background here is number 10, so the effect needs to be 10 dimensional effect. Now, if I turn off my CMYK, you will see that we have that silver separation or the silver substrate and white toner has automatically been generated. And that's it. You've done converting your file. Now I would say that there is a lot more you can do inside Illustrator. And this is why we have training videos that will show you how to do each one of our effects 
inside each application program. And we're not going to go through everything today because that will just be overkill. We would like you to review the videos that we're going to show you later on and learn for yourself how the different effects work. But you should just know that it's a color palette and plugin. It also works very similar for InDesign or Quark Express with a palette of pre-mixed colors that you just apply to your artwork. Okay, so from here, I'm going to save that file. I'm going to make a PDF file. And we're going to visualize that PDF file in our FX viewer a little bit later on. So I'm just going to do a normal PDF. There's no trickery involved here. And just wait for that to save. Okay. Next, we're going to work inside Photoshop. Photoshop, um, I like to think it's a little bit easier. And this is because we've developed a plugin that will do literally all the work for you. So first image I'm going to show you here, I'm going to run through a couple of images, but the first one is just to show you that your image could have multiple layers. It makes no difference. This image is CMYK, but it could be RGB, could be LAB, could be grayscale. Again, it makes no difference. What it does do is um, it will analyze each color pixel. So first of all, let's open up the plugin. So we go to the window menu, extensions, and you'd go to uh, image effects. Oops, wrong one. This one here. Sorry, I've got a lot of beta testing things that I work in the background. So we have the floating palette for color logic, and it is really simple. There is one button. So all we do, click that button, it's going to go through and create our separation for us, our white ink mask. Now what it's doing is it's looking at the different values of pixels and determining how much white would need to go underneath the different areas. So for example, if I look underneath this Las Vegas sign here where we have these white areas, we need to put a white ink mask around all that. But we don't want to put white ink mask maybe in other areas. We don't want to put white, well we want to put white ink into underneath the shadows to keep them deep and shadow looking. So let me just show you what it's done. It's calculated and created a screened separation. Now to show you how that would work, I'm just going to trick the system so you don't need to follow this part. It's just really just to show you on screen what it would look like printed. So what you see there as silver is the silver substrate and the white is that white ink mask going over the top and blocking the substrate out. So you'll notice here that this gentleman's face has got metallic in there. We don't want that. So we need to go and make some masks. So what we're going to do is, luckily we have these separations here already. So I'm going to go through and make some selections of my masks. And you would normally have to cut these out yourselves. We cannot do that for you because we don't know what you want to be metallic. Neither does the computer. So what the computer's done is it's just looked at the color pixels and said, I can tell you what metallic effect is required for different colors. You then have to subtract those areas off that you do not want to be metallic. So here we have, we made a mask. I would go onto my metallic channel and I'm going to delete and get rid of that area that I do not want. And by deleting it, it literally fills it with white, which is your white toner. So now I only have the metallic in the background. So you can see if I turn this on and off, you notice how it's darkening down? And that is because foil substrates have a visual color of about 30% black. So if you've got a color value of about 30% black and you're printing color over the top, it's going to darken down. And this is why we would always recommend put the metallic into the background. Never make foreground elements metallic. Never make the product metallic. And the reason we say never make product metallic, and this, for example, you maybe have, I don't know, it could be a, a set of golf clubs, but you've got to think that if you've got no light shining on your metallic areas, it's going to look very dark, and very dull, and very um, bland. And these are things you don't want associated with your branding. By putting the metallic in the background, it will actually make these foreground elements come off the page and be visually more appealing. So let's just, I'm going to flatten that file. I'm going to now save as, because that's all we have to do. And save as a PDF. Just a normal print quality PDF. And then we're going to show you a couple more images. So these are really just to give you some tips and tricks about how to work your file. So this image here, um, again, as we say, leave the product in CMYK, put the metallic into the background. So we're going to run the plugin. 
it's going to calculate and create as a photorealistic separation in the background for this um, image. We're then going to go to our paths. I've made a path around this woman, made a mask. I'm going to go to my modify and feather because I'm going to put a little bit of soft edging around my cutout a couple of pixels just to stop it being a hard edge and I just delete to white on that element there these are all low res images by the way just to speed up the processing for the, for the uh, demonstration so you can see now if we turn on and off you notice how she becomes visually more appealing and off the page she looks brighter and visually more three-dimensional compared to what we had before it's just a great way to be able to add contrast, but metallic in the background though. Okay, the next image, what we call impact colors. So red, yellow, orange, they are bright, they are vibrant, and they are there for a design reason. Reds, yellows, oranges, that sort of thing, they, they draw the attention for the, for the consumer. They stand out on the shelf. It's got that punch and that vibrancy to it. So if you make these metallic, you're just gonna darken them down. So we would recommend, again, put the metallic in this background area, leave these foreground areas in CMYK, even though you may be tempted, because you might think these Christmas ornaments should be metallic. But just because something should be metallic doesn't mean it will always look good. Golden rule, leave the product alone. Contrast, again, if, if, it's, if we keep stressing this out to our customers, if you make this entire image metallic, even if you run our plugin on it, so you've got the different shading of the white, it's still gonna be quite flat and boring. But by putting contrast in there, so we would make a mask around this red ribbon and around this Christmassy fruit. And so you'd have metallic in the background here, you'd have no metallic here and no metallic in the red, and then you would have metallic at the bottom. So let's just try that. I'm gonna run it through the plugin, generates our separation, we then make a mask and we get rid of that area so if we were to look at it now you can see here we've got metallic no metallic metallic and that is going to give us the contrast that is what happens when light bounces off this metallic it will look different how a light reacts with um, the CMYK basically light is absorbed in here and it's reflected here so contrast is always primary now, sometimes you may have a design or your customers might ask you what you would do with something that's metallic on a metallic background, like we have with this padlock. Now, when I've explained this to customers in the past and I've not told them about some of these you know, top tips and tricks, I just show them this image and say, what part of the image would you make metallic? Everybody always picks the padlock. They never say the background. But if you use our theory, and I'm gonna do that now, I'm gonna run that through the plugin. We're then going to make that mask which we have here and I'm going to delete to white okay so watch this so that is image on the screen is without the, this, the color logic separation now we have it switched on this actually looks visually brighter and more appealing almost like you've made this metallic so it's almost like the opposite of what you think would work better so metallic in the background as opposed to the foreground. Now, when you're working on a foiled material like you would use on your Rico devices, we can actually create something quite interesting. You don't have to keep the separation the same. And let me explain that to you. Let's run this through the, the separation tool. It's gonna to generate the color logic plate for us. And from there, we're gonna make our mask. And we're going to delete all the area that we don't want to be metallic. So I now have this separation. And what you can do, some little golden tips that I usually tell people, I would normally go to my curves and I would check to see if there's anything I can do to improve my print. Sometimes images come out great, but sometimes you might just want to manually adjust them. So for example, you could, if you wanted to, push some of the mid-tone range up here and just fill it a little bit more solid. It's completely up to you. Now, what I want to show you though, is how you don't have to have everything the same. So this image is a good example for this. You've got a bodywork of the car. The bodywork is like a, it's a paint. So it's got a different optical property to the alloy wheels or the rims of this car, which is a chrome. So we can simulate those two different effects. So we're gonna do a mask. 
turn off the CMYK. Oops. Do a quick mask around here. Okay, now I'm just going to select all the background area now and I'm going to use my curves and I'm going to drop that down to say 50%. So it's half of what it was before. What that means is it's putting more white ink over the top to block the substrate out. So we're stopping the substrate from showing through as much, which means that this area here is going to be more of a foiled effect and this effect is going to be more of a matte metallic. So creating two different types of effects from the same substrate to create two different optical effects in your design. So you can do some quite interesting things, but this is really why it becomes a designer's tool. Clicking a palette or running a plugin is easy. Making a good design is what it's all about. We would recommend that if you are designing with our tools, aim for about, I call it the rule of thirds. So use 30% of a design in metallic and 70% you know, in CMYK or vice versa, or anything up to about 40% really. If you have everything in metallic, it's just going to look flat. So you've got to think about what the product will look like on the shelf if there's no light shining on it. If everything's metallic, then that product will look dark and dull. If you've got 70% of the design in CMYK, it's always going to have that visual brightness to it, which will then be accentuated by the metallic foils as you move the print. Okay, so that's Photoshop. So that's really all there is to those tools. The next stage is we're going to go through the FX viewer. So the two PDF files we just made, I'm going to drag and drop the tools onto FX viewer. And this is why we recommend people using our system on a Mac. We appreciate that a lot of the uh, technical people out there, especially with inside companies like Rico, may be using PCs, but Mac will always give you the best results because we can use the full system. Now I'm going to start out by visualizing in an environment. So I'm going to go into our studio here. The FX viewer is a really simple system to learn. You really only need to worry about this view menu. And that's basically you're going to visualize we're on the Rico device printing on foil. But before we get to that, let me just show you how FX viewer works. So it is a 3D virtual room. You can actually go all the way around here. And we've got light sources coming in from different directions. And what happens is the light's going to bounce off this design and show us the effect. So we're going to visualize on foil, because that's what's happening on the Ricoh device. And when we move it, we can now see our design printed on foil. So what you're seeing is the reflectivity of everything around it bouncing off this foil design here. So as a designer, I can then see if I've got my design right, whether I like it, whether it's got too much metallic, not enough, or if I've done something wrong. And this is the way you can stop having those proof issues going backwards and forwards. Now, if you have a um, more like a, a pearlescent type material, you can use our metallic ink. It works very similar to the pearlescent materials. It gives you like a pearlescent type effect, which is more decreased. The other effect that we, the, sorry, the other environment that we have is a viewing booth, a pre-pressed light box. So the, the, the environment we were just in is what we call a spherical light source. It's a 360 degree light source. This one is slightly different. This is a pre-pressed booth. So you've got an overhead static light source this time. So if I reset that, this time because the light source is up above you, you need to do what you would do in real life. You push the print backwards to be able to gain that optical effect. Okay. So let's take a look at what it says, Orchard Estate. So this is where I'm going to show you the, the dimensional effect. So at the moment we have blue, light blue for Orchard Estate on a dark blue background, and we have light red on a dark red background. Now when we move that into the light, they change. You've got dark blue on a light blue background, dark red on a light red background. And let me just do half on and half off for this blue one so you can see that change taking effect. When the light bounces off the metallic, it becomes optically brighter than the four color, which makes the four color look like it's changing to a darker hue. And when there's no light shining on that metallic, the four color looks brighter than that because, as I mentioned before, you've got this dark dullness to metallic materials. But we use that to our advantage to create contrast and dimension in the print. So that really is how that works. Um, I'm now going to show you the other file, which was the poster image the card thrower. Just a few notes about this card thrower image as well. It's, it's not one of our images and that's why we like to demonstrate it. It's actually um, 
created by the illustrator for Marvel Comics. Uh, so we chose it on purpose because it's got lots of color, lots of different levels, you've got foreground and background, and it just works well for our demonstration purposes. So I'm going to visualize printing on foil, and again we can then go through, and now we have that photorealistic design with the metallic in the background, and yet all this foreground element still retains its color visual brilliance. So there, metallic in the background, always works better. Okay, so next we're going to go into the uh, Rico NFR landing site. Open up one of these web browsers. And let's have a look. Let's see what we've got. And it catches up. And I think it is. Yeah, this one here. Okay, so the first time you try to log into the vault, it will ask you for your username and password. So we have supplied that username and password to you in a PDF form for those that have purchased the system. That will then load up this page here. Um, so it says click to enter. So there's this little readme file in here. Um, if you have forgotten your username and password, do contact us and we will get that issued to you. And there's a copyright notice. This basically just says, please do not give any of these files out to any of your customers. They do uh, form part of our saleable goods and are protected by both our intellectual property and our copyright. Uh, what we provide to you is for the benefits of you to be able to sell ColorLogic to your customers. Um, so we click to agree and enter. It's just standard copyright stuff really. Okay, so what we have now, we have these steps, step one, two, three, four, etc. So let's just work our way through. So first of all, step one, it says here, you've got your test forms and it says action required. You need to print these forms on your press and submit samples to ColorLogic to be measured and certified. There is a PDF file with inside these, which is supplied inside the file that you would download that tells you more information. You would also, we recommend printing either the swatch book and or the color charts. Again, these are easier to hand out to customers. These are, have more visual impact when you're actually showing customers what you can do. And again, print them out and give them to your sales teams. Second, we have print samples. So we have a whole range of artworks that we've had created, especially for Rico. So we've got like a little trifold wallet. We have business cards. So we've got outer, we're printing the foil, the reverse prints in CMYK. Like you can put your own you know, information on there if you so wish. We've just created the basic outlines. Underneath is obviously a link to download each one of these files. We have greeting cards. These got uh, some of our different effects in the background. Where possible, we're trying to educate people so that when it's printed out, you'll it'll say you know it's printed on a Rico device. Uh, it printed using white plus CMYK, and it will indicate what the substrate was. So it's kind of a learning tool that when you leave something behind as a sample, somebody knows how it was produced. And that is really critical. You know, the amount of times I see print samples that are handed out and there's no indication of how it was produced. Garment tags, uh, this is a luxury brand that we designed up for you um, called Bijou. And um, it'll, you know, it's a very simple way to be able to just cut out multiple samples. That then matches the, the luxury packaging. This was actually designed for a luxurious, uh, lipstick holder so it's like a 14 karat gold lipstick with a diamond on it sort of thing so trying to target luxury goods here things that you can easily print on your machines we then have direct mail and postcards so this is a um, like a transformation postcard basically saying you know transforming normal print into something of beauty but then on the reverse it indicates that we've printed on the Rico device and explains about what color logic is and how it works so it's kind of like a self-selling little promotion we also have counter cards or POS cards. Um, this one we've done for, like it's like a Valentine's thing, but this is to show you the complexity of the white ink masking. So on the reverse, this magenta separation shows you what the white ink mask looks like. So anybody that knows about white ink masking, and if you ask them how long it would take them to create the white ink mask for this design, they would tell you it would take hours. In fact, some people that I've shown this to have said they would not even like to even attempt to try and make this white mask. But using ColorLogic, it was done in seconds. 
We also have tickets. Uh, we think these are quite cool. It's uh, your ticket to success. Nice little play up on you know creating gold, you know luxurious goods, and being successful with your Rico device. We have trading cards. Now these are more like a US base type trading card, but it could be anything. You know, I've got a whole range of trading cards on my desk here that I've collected over the past couple of weeks. Uh, we've started working with Carter Mundi in the past. Uh, Carter Mundi make all the playing cards for the casinos. They also do everything from like um, like the um, Disney and Pixar type collector cards. It could be you know trading cards like football, soccer, you know the World Cup sort of thing. So anything there um, that can be used as a collector's edition. And what you typically find on these collector cards, um, there's got a whole range of football ones out at the moment for the local sports teams in the UK. They all have foil stamping on them. And some of them are even done on holographic boards. So they're already using that high-end material. So you can reproduce these and target these markets. So another great one to get involved with. We also created an infographic poster. Uh, you could print this out on your machines, uh, whether it's on the latex or on your cut sheet devices. And it just explains, you know, what is Colologic, how does it work with brands, graphic designers, benefits to Rico customers, etc. A nice little way to be able to um, promote the system. So those are your files to help you sell Color Logic on your machine. Next, training. This is what we would like you to do after this re watching this webinar. So if you are interested in actually um, designing with our tools, then we have videos for each one of these different effects. So you've got you know how to do gradation effects, watermarks, um, and it's dependent upon different um, systems. So you've got one for InDesign, one for Illustrator, one for Photoshop. So if I want to know how do I make a watermark in Photoshop, there is a video for that. Now, interestingly enough, um, we the only reason we really made all these is because we found that people didn't read a user manual. And I am very similar like that. I have never read a user manual in my life, probably never will. I'm a self-taught computer geek, as people call me. Um, but really, do watch the videos. The videos link to our user manual, so every section in our manual is replicated into one of these videos. We also have some miscellaneous videos, so, you know, the added value of whiting, there's an overview of what color logic is, and this is where I'm gonna be putting the video from today, we'll put something in here. In fact, actually, I'll put it in the sales tools here. So sales tools, we have a video to play at trade shows and exhibitions. Two different formats, same movie, and just basically has a, a video of an overview of what color logic is and a quick, short version of how to design with it. It's great to leave at trade shows or events so that people can actually watch it. And you can also put it on your websites or send to your customers. It's, it's quite all right to do that. We also have the PowerPoint presentation, which is similar to what I've done today, probably a little bit more in depth. And then we have some white papers on benefits of white ink printing. Next, we have the manuals, the user manuals. So first of all, up here we have the guidelines for printing out ColorLogic on your Rico device. So if you don't already have that, you can download it from our website. We then have our user manuals, and our user manuals are in six different languages. I think we just had Portuguese added to that. Um, but the main primary languages are covered. And then we have a user manual uh, download area for FX Viewer as well. So we do cover most of the application programs in uh, different languages. So if you don't understand our training videos because you don't understand English, you can at least read the user manual and see what we're talking about because each part of the manual, as I said, replicates into a video. Our software installers, this is where it's a little bit more tricky. Um, we've just changed um, the process for customers. In the past, all our licenses that have been sent out had CDs inside the boxes. And those CDs, um, in, in our opinion, was a little bit more complicated for customers to learn to actually use them. It's kind of hard to explain, but there was a process by where a customer had to activate each of the CDs. And that activation is handled by the US. And due to the time differences between, say, Germany and the US, you could lose seven hours between the day from when you tried installing the system before you get issued your activation codes. So we've removed those activation wrappers around our software installers now, and we're putting everything into this client login area. So all customers from now on will be sent a PDF file 
with an access to this site. So they'd have one very similar to what this Rico landing page is, but will have it for their own customers. Um, so in here you have access to our installers for both Mac, PC. Um, there is, uh, frustratingly, Adobe has changed what they've done for 2015 Adobe Photoshop um, and Illustrator. And basically what, what they've done is they've stopped supporting Extension Manager, which was the plugin tool that would install third-party plugins onto their software. So we've had to recode things up using JavaScripting. So we actually have um, a way to be install our plugin if you have any issues. So we do recommend you read all the instructions on this page and if you have any problems, do contact us. Um, unfortunately, it's out of our control. It's just the way that Adobe has done things. So we're having to change things as we go along. So that is how it all works. The client login area for you guys. For a customer that buys a license, they would go through something very similar. So let me just quickly give you an overview of that. They would go to the client login area, but we call it the vault. It's a, like a client login area. So there's two areas here. There's one for the printer, but then there's also a vault area for the printer's customer, which is the designer. So if they sell our design suites to people, then obviously they can log in and access the support area as well. So let's just go into the printer one. Uh, put in my details. Uh, you should only need to put your details in once. However, as we update and add things to the site, it will ask you to reconfirm those details because obviously it's re-uploaded the website information. So the printer logs in as normal. They have something very similar. Print the test forms. The samples, however, is different. Um, this is where at the bottom down here it says click here and it will then take you to a new web page. And it will then have a list of all the different files that they can access. So there's a whole range of things. These are just for the customer though. And then again, it's the training, sales tools, very, very similar to what you all have, um, except for the sales tools, they have something slightly different. They have um, the ability to sell our product. So let me just open that PDF up because it's quite important I show this to you. Okay, so there's two different types of licenses that um, as an NFR reseller that you can actually sell to customers. We have what we call our standard license, which gives you one copy of our tools. And that's really designed for a printer that wants to control everything internally. So for example, they would give a swatch book to an external customer and say, tell me what colors you want and we will do all the work for you. That is what we call our standard license. We then have modules, um, what we call our premium and premium plus. The difference between the premium and premium plus, and let me get this up on the screen so I can actually go through these differences with you. Go to the printer's license and it will show you here. So a standard license, these are our um, end user license pricing. So this is in US dollars, but it's gonna be slightly different to what you obviously would have. Premium and Premium Plus is the same system, but it gives you multiple copies. So for example, with a standard license, you would get one copy of the FX Viewer and one copy of the Design Suite to install, which is our color palettes and plugins. With the Premium, you get um, a three copies of the FX Viewer, so you can put it on three different computers. And then you get this multi-seat installer, so you can put the color palettes and plugins on as many computers as you want. The Premium Plus, same thing, but you get down here, this is where it gets a bit more complicated. We give design suites away with the licenses. So there are additional seats with the color palettes, the plugins, and the FX viewer. You'd get four copies of that with a premium license and 10 copies with a premium plus. The reason for these is that these are the ones that the customer will sell. So your print customer will be able to sell these licenses. So if you have somebody that buys the Premium Plus license, first of all, you can install or your customer can install it on as many computers as they want. They would get three copies of RFX Viewer for themselves to use on their computers. But then they would also get 10 additional design suites and FX viewers with a retail price of nearly $600. So if they were to sell all 10 of those, they get, for example, $5,999 back. So let's call it $6,000. If the license is 7900 
that means they've recuperated almost all the cost of the licensing just by selling these design suites. And that is what we've done it for. We do not sell design suites or FX viewers to designers. If a designer wants to buy them from us, we will push them back to a printer. And we use that through our geo map, and I'll show you that in a moment. So this is our most popular one at the moment because a printer will say, well, I'll print my swatch books, I'll then sell a design suite with my swatch book to an agency and then I can recuperate the cost on that license. So instead of looking at it and saying, well, if I have to buy a license for nearly $8,000, how many jobs do I have to print? Look at it a different way. Sell your 10 design suites and you've almost paid for your license. They can also buy additional copies from us and that's why I was bringing up this sheet here. Um, Printers can actually buy additional design suites from us at a discounted price and then sell them. So they retail at $599. They could buy them from us at $499. So they can actually make money by selling our products as well. Okay, so next we've covered pretty much the licensing aspects of it. What I'm going to show you now is the Finder printer map. So at the moment we have um, this map here. And this shows all the locations of our licensees and I'll explain about the map in a second. What we are doing is eventually we're just working on the website at the moment. This find a printer is going to change. There'll be a drop down menu that will be find a printer, find a reseller, find a demo center, find a designer. So it'll be a different map and that's where we're going to generate a map for Rico. So it'll be the Rico NFR sites. So you'll be able to publicize where people can go to, to buy um, a license from you with your machines. So in this map area, we can zoom in and you'll see that we have lots of different, look at the US for now, lots of different colored pins. So the reason for these different pins is that the black pins here are the ones that have bought a license. And that means that they can use the system and they can print with it, that's fine. What we do try and get all printers to do is become certified. And that means print the test forms and send them to us for measurement and analysis to make sure that you're printing to the best performance of that machine. The ones that are all colored, you know, these show the premier printers, these are the ones that have now gone through that certification process. So we can toggle between you know, offset, digital, flexo, etc. Our primary markets are digital and offset. We also have a lot of customers that don't want to be on the map. Uh, we found that quite strange at first, but some of the printers are very, very um, particular about who knows what they're doing. So let me just show you a little area around. Let's go into, where was it? Go around here. You can see like little pin groups. You'll see that when people start buying technology, it'll kind of spread out in a concentric circle around from those areas. You can see here, once somebody else starts buying a license, I mean, they're quite close together, these companies. So it is word of mouth. So if somebody sees another printer on there, and this is what we use it for, it's what we like to call malicious marketing. Um, by listing all the printers on here, it's great for us to be able to push designers and brands. So if a brand says to us, who's got a license in, in Ireland? We can pinpoint them to a customer here in Ireland. But we also know that printers look at this map. So if they see a, a competitor on there, like this one in say Dominican Republic, there might be another printer that goes, right, I need that technology because I don't want to run the risk of losing a customer. So it helps to sell the system by putting down where all these customers are located. So there's multiple uses for this map. So that really covers pretty much the whole part of what ColorLogic is. We also do have training videos, um, multilingual literature as well, which is readily accessible to everybody. So for example, if you go to the literature page, um, we have it in high and low resolution and it breaks it down into you know a little bit about what is ColorLogic, about the color charts, etc. We also have training videos. These are the generic ones that we don't give away our know-how in these. We just show people what we're doing. Um, this video here that was done recently of me in Dubai, that was at a brand packaging forum. That's a really good video to watch actually because it really does show and talk about what ColorLogic is. And you can use these for your own personal use. And, you know, When you go into these things here, you can click down on the YouTube down here it will then take you to the YouTube page to actually get that link to that video. So you can post it and show it to other people if you wish. 
we also have some other quite good things on our website if you go to the examples tab we've got example videos from customers so these are files that customers have sent to us that they've printed off their machines uh, we've made them into videos so we can actually show people all these different effects and as and when we start getting things off the Rico thing we could maybe put in a, like a little Rico tab showing things that have been printed off of Rico press anything that we can do to help you sell it's in our interest to do so also in that same thing we've got a before and after comparison so let's just have a look at that for now it's what we call the FX slider so let's take this one this this uh, malaria tablet box packaging so when that loads up okay so we've got these sliders which you can click and move so this is the four color we then added color logic and some of our effects to it and created this before and after so it's a great way I mean this is all HTML based so it's just something that we've built into our website to be able to show and demonstrate the benefits of our system but it's a great little tool to be able to show what happens by using a little bit of creation using our tools and down here we've got it showing with a metallic ink other examples that we have in there you know we've got the test forms again that's another quite good one to show people show you the benefits of using our system turn a normal flat four color design into something of beauty